This happened during my first week working the night shift at the auto repair. I'm Jimmy, by the way. I'm 23 and just moved to this small town for a fresh start after dropping out of college. Needed a job quick, and Frank was hiring. It was a rainy Tuesday night, around 10.30. The shop was quiet except for the steady patter of raindrops on the metal roof. I was alone, which wasn't unusual for the night shift. We didn't get many customers that late, but Frank liked having someone there just in case. I was under an old Chevy, trying to figure out why the owner said it was making a weird noise when I heard the bell over the door jingle. Sliding out from under the car, I saw a man standing there, dripping wet from the rain. Hey there, I said, grabbing a rag to wipe my hands. What can I do for you? The guy just stared at me for a moment. He was maybe in his 40s, kind of scruffy looking, with wild eyes that made me a little uneasy. When he finally spoke, his words came out fast and jumbled. Car, my car, it's, it's not working right. You gotta fix it, now. I nodded, trying to keep things calm. Okay, sir, where's your car? Is it outside? He pointed vaguely towards the parking lot. Out there, blue, no, green, it's green. You gotta fix it now. Something felt off, but I figured maybe he was just stressed about his car. I grabbed my jacket and followed him outside. The rain was coming down harder now, and I could barely see anything in the dim light of the parking lot. I don't see a green car out here, sir, I said, squinting through the rain. Are you sure this is where you parked it? The man spun around, his face twisted in anger. Are you calling me a liar? It's here! You just can't see it because you're stupid! I took a step back, holding up my hands. Whoa, easy there. I'm not calling you anything. Let's go back inside and figure this out, okay? He glared at me for a long moment, then nodded and followed me back into the shop. As soon as we were inside, he started pacing back and forth, muttering to himself. I tried to get more information from him. So, what seems to be the problem with your car? He stopped pacing and looked at me like I was an idiot. I told you already. It's not working right. You gotta fix it. Okay, but what's not working? Is it making a noise? Not starting? He threw his hands up in frustration. Everything. Nothing. I don't know. You're the mechanic. You figure it out. I was starting to get really uncomfortable. This guy was clearly not all there, and I wasn't sure how to handle the situation. I thought about calling Frank, but I didn't want to seem like I couldn't handle things on my own. Sir, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. I can't fix your car if I can't see it or know what's wrong with it. Maybe we should. I trailed off as the man reached into his jacket and pulled out a small handgun. My heart started racing as he waved it around, not pointing it at me, but definitely making sure I saw it. You think I'm stupid? He yelled. You think I don't know what I'm talking about? I know cars. I know everything about cars. I raised my hand slowly, trying to stay calm. I don't think you're stupid at all, sir. I'm just trying to help. Why don't we put the gun away and talk about this? He ignored me, continuing to rant about cars and how nobody understood him. I knew I had to do something, but I was scared to move. My eyes darted around the shop, looking for anything I could use to defend myself if I had to. That's when I remembered the silent alarm button under the counter. Frank had shown it to me during training, saying it was for emergencies. If I could just get to it without this guy noticing. I took a deep breath and tried to sound casual. Hey, you know what? I think I might have some tools in the back that could help with your car. Why don't I go grab them? The man's eyes narrowed suspiciously. You trying to trick me? You gonna run away? I shook my head quickly. No, no. I just want to get the right tools so I can fix your car. That's what you want, right? He seemed to think about it for a moment, then nodded. Okay, but be quick, and no funny business. I walked as calmly as I could to the back of the shop, my heart pounding in my chest. As soon as I was out of his sight, I pulled out my phone and texted Frank, man with gun in shop, help. Then I quickly called him and left the line open, hoping he'd hear what was going on and call the cops. I shoved the phone in my pocket, grabbed a random wrench, and headed back out. Got it, I said, holding up the wrench. Now, why don't you tell me more about your car? I figured if I could keep him talking, maybe Frank would hear everything and get help. The guy started rambling about his car again, jumping from one topic to another. I nodded along, pretending to understand, 
all the while hoping Frank was listening and had called the police. After what felt like hours, probably only about 20 minutes, I heard cars pulling up outside. The man must have heard them too because he suddenly went quiet and looked towards the door. What's that? He asked, his voice rising in panic. Who did you call? Before I could answer, the door burst open and several police officers rushed in, guns drawn. Drop the weapon, one of them shouted. The man looked confused for a second, then seemed to remember he was holding the gun. He let it fall to the floor and raised his hands. As the police handcuffed him and led him away, one of the officers came over to check on me. I was shaking so bad I could barely speak, but I managed to tell him what happened. It turned out the guy causing problems all over town that night. They found his actual car a few blocks away, where he'd run it into a ditch. Frank showed up not long after, worried sick. He told me he'd heard everything through the phone call and immediately contacted the police. He kept telling me how proud he was of how I handled things, but honestly, I was just glad to be alive. I quit the night shift after that. Frank understood and gave me day hours instead. I still get nervous sometimes when I'm alone in the shop, but I'm working through it. That night taught me that you never know what kind of situation you might find yourself in, even in a small town like this. I'm just glad it ended without anyone getting hurt. I've been working the night shift at a gas station on the outskirts of town for about four months now. It's not the most exciting job, but it pays the bills and gives me time to study for my online classes during the slow hours. The night it all went down started like any other. I clocked in at 10 p.m., did my usual rounds of restocking the shelves and cleaning up, and I was looking forward to a peaceful shift where I could catch up on some reading for my psychology class. Around midnight, this guy walked in. At first, I didn't think much of it. He was kind of scruffy looking, maybe in his 40s, wearing a ratty old jacket and jeans. I figured he was just another late night customer grabbing a snack or something. But then he just stood there, right in front of the counter, staring at me with these intense eyes. I tried to be friendly, you know? Can I help you with anything, sir? I asked. He didn't say a word, just kept staring. I started to feel a little uneasy. My mouth went dry and I could feel my heart beating faster. I tried again, um, sir, is everything okay? That's when things got weird. He suddenly lunged forward and hit me right in the lower belly. It wasn't super hard, but it caught me off guard. I stumbled back, more shocked than hurt. What the heck, man? I yelled, trying to keep my voice steady. You need to leave now or I'm calling the cops. He just smiled. It was the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Then he said in this low, gravelly voice, You think you're safe behind that counter, boy? I could jump over there and finish what I started before you even blink. I was freaking out inside, but I tried to stay calm. I reached for my phone, keeping my eyes on him the whole time. Sir, I'm warning you. Leave now, or I'm calling the police. He started pacing back and forth, muttering to himself. I couldn't make out what he was saying, but it sounded angry. I dialed 911 as quietly as I could, my hands shaking. Just as I was about to hit call, the door chimed. Two guys walked in, probably on their way home from a late shift or something. They must have sensed the tension because they stopped in their tracks. The creepy guy turned to look at them, and I saw my chance. I hit call and whispered urgently to the operator, explaining the situation as quickly as I could. Everything happened so fast after that. The creepy guy lunged at one of the new customers, shoving him into a display rack. The other guy tried to intervene, and suddenly there was a full-on brawl in the middle of the store. I wanted to help, but I was scared stiff. I stayed on the line with the operator describing what was happening. It was probably only a few minutes before I heard sirens in the distance. The creepy guy must have heard them too, because he suddenly bolted for the door. The two customers were on the floor, one holding his arm and the other with a bloody nose. When the cops arrived, they took statements from all of us. The two guys who came in were pretty shaken up, but okay. They said they didn't know the creepy guy, just that he attacked them out of nowhere. The police arrived just as the creepy guy was trying to make a run for it. They managed to catch him in the parking lot after a short chase. I watched from inside as they handcuffed him 
and put him in the back of a patrol car. It was like a weight lifted off my chest, but I was still shaking. The officers came back inside to take statements from me and the two customers who'd gotten caught up in the mess. The guys were pretty banged up, but didn't need to go to the hospital. One had a split lip, and the other was nursing what looked like it might turn into a nasty bruise on his arm. I told the police everything that happened. My boss came in early when he heard what happened. He told me to take a few days off, said he'd cover my shifts. I wanted to argue, to prove I was okay, but honestly, I was relieved. I spent the next couple days at home, jumping at every little noise. My mom kept trying to get me to talk about it, but I didn't know what to say. How do you explain feeling scared in a place you're supposed to feel safe? When I went back to work, everything looked the same, but it felt different. Every customer that came in, I found myself watching them closely, wondering if they were going to snap like that guy did. The cops swing by more often now, which helps a little. But there's still this nagging feeling in the back of my mind. What if someone else comes in? I keep telling myself it was a one-time thing, that lightning doesn't strike twice. But every time that door chimes, every time I see movement out of the corner of my eye, I feel my heart race. I guess this is just something I'll have to learn to live with. But man, I never thought a simple gas station job could turn into this. I'm Joy, 23, and I've been working the night desk for this hotel about six months now. It's usually pretty quiet, just checking in late arrivals and dealing with the occasional complaint about noisy neighbors. Last night started off normal enough. I clocked in at 10.45 p.m., relieved the evening staff, and settled in for my usual routine of browsing my phone and watching the security cameras. Around 1 a.m., this guy walks in. At first, I didn't think much of it. We get all types here, but something about him just felt off. He was tall and skinny, wearing a dark coat that looked too big for him. His hair was all messy, like he'd been out in the wind. When he got to the desk, I noticed his eyes were really wide, almost bulging out of his head. I tried to be professional and gave him my usual greeting. Welcome. How can I help you tonight? The man just stared at me for a moment, not saying anything. Then he leaned in real close and said in a low voice, I need a room, and I need raw meat. I blinked, not sure I heard him right. I'm sorry, sir. Could you repeat that? A room, he said, louder this time. And raw meat, bring it to my room. Now, I've had some weird requests before, but this was a new one. I tried to explain that we didn't have any raw meat, and that room service was closed anyway. He just kept insisting, getting more and more agitated. Look, I really need it. Just get me some raw meat. I don't care what kind. Beef, pork, chicken, whatever. Just make it happen. I was starting to get nervous. This guy was clearly not right in the head. I told him again that we couldn't provide raw meat, but I could give him a list of nearby restaurants that might be open late. He didn't like that answer. His face changed, getting all twisted up. He leaned in even closer, and I could smell his breath. It was awful, like something had died in his mouth. Listen, kid, he growled. If you don't get me what I want, I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands. And trust me, you don't want that. My heart was racing. I tried to stay calm, but my voice was shaking when I said, Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. We can't accommodate your request and threats are not tolerated here. That's when things got really scary. He reached across the desk and grabbed my shirt, pulling me towards him. You don't understand, he hissed. I need it, and if I don't get it, I might just have to kill you and take what I need. I froze. I couldn't believe this was happening. I wanted to call for help, but there was no one else around. The security guard wouldn't be back for another hour. I was on my own. Somehow, I managed to pull away from him. Please, just go, I said, trying to sound firm. I don't want any trouble. He glared at me for what felt like forever. Then, suddenly, he turned and stormed out of the hotel. I let out a huge breath, thinking it was over, but I was wrong. About ten minutes later, I saw him on the security camera, pacing back and forth in front of the hotel. I was terrified he might come back in, so I locked the front doors. For the next few hours, I watched him on the cameras, always staying close to the hotel. My shift was almost over when I saw him walk away from the hotel. I thought maybe he'd finally given up. 
I was so relieved that I decided to step outside for some fresh air before the morning staff arrived. Big mistake. As soon as I walked out the door, I heard rapid footsteps behind me. I turned around just in time to see the man lunging at me, his hand raised to strike. I put my arms up to protect myself, closing my eyes and bracing for the hit, but it never came. Instead, I heard a loud thud and a grunt. I opened my eyes to see the man sprawled on the ground and a taxi driver standing over him. The driver had gotten out of his cab just in time to see what was happening and had tackled the guy. You okay, kid? The driver asked me. I nodded, still in shock. The man on the ground was yelling and thrashing around. The taxi driver held him down while I ran back inside to call the police. They arrived a few minutes later and took the man away. As they were putting him in the police car, he looked right at me and yelled, This isn't over. I'll find you. I gave my statement to the police. The taxi driver stayed with me until my manager arrived. He kept saying I was lucky that if he hadn't been there, I can't stop thinking about what might have happened. The police told me the guy was known to them, that he had a history of mental health issues and violent behavior. They said I did the right thing by not giving in to his demands. What if he really does try to find me? What if next time, there's no taxi driver to save me? I don't know if I can go back to work after this. The sun's coming up now, and I haven't slept at all.